We've talked about all sorts of strange and unusual coasters on this channel, but there are even more of these bizarre attractions out there. From soapbox kitty coasters, to pink and yellow Russian single rail coasters, here are the top 10 weirdest roller coasters as voted on by the viewers. Number 10. Bullet at Mexico's Selva Magica In the 1970s, coaster guru Anton Schwarzkopf introduced the shuttle loop model to the market. Designed by Werner Stengel, this was among the first launched roller coaster models ever created, and it gave small parks a great opportunity to get a relatively inexpensive looping coaster with a very small footprint. Supposedly though, Schwarzkopf wanted to make the shuttle loop even more compact for traveling fares. So around the early 1980s, the first and only portable shuttle loop was built at Austria's Wiener Prater. It would be relocated several times before ending up at Mexico's Selva Magica, where it still stands today. This coaster is basically a shuttle loop bent in half, forming a layout that crosses over itself. Passengers board the train on an angle, as the station is literally built onto a banked section of track inside the vertical loop. Drive tires are then used to propel the train forwards and backwards. Once enough momentum is gained, the train is able to pass through the loop encircling the station. It should be noted that the station is said by many to provide one of the scariest head chopper effects of all time. This loop leads into another upward spike which helps burn off excess momentum. And unlike most shuttle loops, the spikes actually come close to touching each other. Then the whole thing is repeated backwards as the train makes its way to the station. Despite its unique appearance and small footprint, this model never really caught on in the industry, and only one was ever built. Nevertheless, it remains a much sought after roller coaster among rare credit seekers. Number 9. The Kitty Racer, made by German manufacturer Gerstlauer. Remember the mitten from the Roller Cowards episode of Spongebob? This is pretty much the real life equivalent. This is perhaps the smallest full circuit roller coaster ever made by a major manufacturer. As Gerstlauer describes it, this model is quote, the world's first roller coaster for the smallest coaster fans. Designed like a wooden soapbox derby racer, this single train coaster can only carry one small child at a time. The tiny layout consists of a lift hill, a curve drop, and a small dip. This is undoubtedly the most adorable roller coaster of all time, and its minuscule nature has made it incredibly popular in the amusement industry. Since 2013, 11 of these coasters have popped up in small parks across Europe. And in addition to how surreal it is, this coaster is also a stroke of genius. What Gerstlauer has done here is create a small coaster that kids can ride by themselves, helping them build up the confidence needed for the bigger attractions. It encourages independence, and will no doubt inspire a whole new generation of coaster enthusiasts. Kudos to Gerstlauer for this unique coaster model. Number 8. Selva and Cantata Made by Italian manufacturer L&T Systems What do you get when you cross a wild mouse and a water coaster? You get perhaps the most inventive and unique creation since the Quesa Lupa. Built by manufacturer L&T Systems, this coaster features big, bulky cars that resemble airboats. They even have working propellers. The ride experience starts off with a standard wild mouse layout. The bottom of the structure, however, features a splashdown section that transitions into what resembles a free-floating flume section. The most unique aspect of this coaster by far is the interactivity. The cars have buttons that allow passengers to decide whether or not they want water effects. A sign reads, if you want refreshing effects, press. This comes in handy for riders who don't feel like getting too wet. But if you're looking for a moderate level thrill ride on a hot day, see if you can get on this creative attraction. Number 7. The Spinning Yacht Model Made by Chinese manufacturer Jingbei Amusement Equipment Company LTD China is home to a variety of unique attractions, one of which is the unorthodox spinning coaster known as the Spinning Yacht. This model is vastly different from the typical spinning coaster on the market. Everyone is seated around the center axis facing outwards, being held in by an unusual restraint system. The restraints consist of over-the-shoulder straps and a lap bar, which is a decent amount for a coaster of such a small size. This miniature coaster's layout is an oval-shaped course with a dip in the center. Instead of a lift hill, a drive tire system is used to power the car through the course, which can lead some to classify this as a launch coaster. From what I can see, the tires also serve as the braking system, and this coaster takes quite a while to come to a full and complete stop. 
This model would prove to be a success for Jingbei, with 13 of them still operating across China. If you've gotten to ride one of these, let me know about it in the comment section because I'm curious as to how they ride. Number 6. Green Dragon at Wales Greenwood Forest Park Imagine a completely eco-friendly roller coaster with no electricity and no motors. A coaster entirely powered by simple mechanics. Well, say hello to Green Dragon. To board this coaster, passengers climb up a hill to the loading station with a train on a lower section of track. At this point, guests are instructed to stand on a platform connected to the lower track section. A pulley system then uses the weight of the platform to bring the train up to the loading station. Guests then board back at the top and the train is sent on its way. This loading system is just as strange as it is creative, and could be a great physics lesson for younger parkgoers. The ride itself is a relaxing scenic ride through the park's greenery. The whole experience just goes to show that a ride doesn't have to be thrilling to be memorable. And I dare say it's one of my bucket list coasters just for how unique it is. Number 5. The Big Air Model Made by Italian manufacturer SBF Visa In recent years, SBF's spinning coaster model has become one of the most popular roller coasters on the market. Its small size and affordable price has led to countless installations around the world. In 2019 though, the company decided to go even bigger with a new spinning coaster model. That year at the annual IAPA Expo, they would introduce an all new coaster model known as the Big Air. This bizarre roller coaster is like something straight out of a dream. While most of the train consists of the standard SBF spinning cars, the front car is a large rotating wheel with guests inside. This is known in the industry as a hamster wheel. On certain sections of track, a third rail makes contact with a rubber wheel below the hamster wheel. This rubber wheel then rotates the hamster wheel in the opposite direction, flipping passengers like a washing machine. This inventive, affordable coaster allows small parks to invest in a coaster that goes upside down, which is a huge selling point to potential thrill seekers. So far, this model has been extremely successful with two of them already opening and another two set to open this year. If you're looking for a weird and wacky roller coaster, SBF Visa has you covered. Number 4. The Sounding Roller Coaster Made by Chinese manufacturer Zhaozhang Zhuma Amusement Equipment Company LTD. The name is actually referring to a sounding rocket, which is a type of rocket used to make scientific measurements in suborbital flight. While the name may not be that strange, the actual coaster is. In what appears to be a blatant copy of SBF Visa's Tower Coaster, this ride features an extreme beyond vertical drop that leads straight into a vertical loop. However, the way the ride is designed has definitely turned some heads. First of all, the vertical loop is extremely tight, and the way it's profiled makes it look like it would be painful to ride. Then after the loop, a long straight section of track seemingly only exists to make the layout longer. Then after two harsh bank turns, the ride is over. It looks like someone hit the autocomplete button in Roller Coaster Tycoon after the loop. So far, this is the only footage of this coaster available, and I haven't heard of anyone actually riding this. But who knows, it could be smooth as butter. So if you wrote it, let me know about it. Number 3. The Skytrack Model Made by Welsh manufacturer Skyrider Thrills Imagine a flying coaster scaled down to fit in a Chuck E. Cheese. That's pretty much what this coaster is. Built exclusively at indoor family entertainment centers, this coaster runs on a single rail with a small capsule-like car. The car's design requires passengers to lay face down, which technically qualifies it as a flying coaster. Due to the design and size of the car though, only children can ride this coaster. So if you're a young credit-seeking coaster enthusiast, see if you can ride this when you can. Situated among ball pits and slides, this is the kind of roller coaster that would have been amazing to see at a place like Discovery Zone. Now there isn't a lot of information known about this coaster model, and the most recent information I could find was a Facebook post from the manufacturer saying that there is still two operating in England. One can be found at Go Kids Go in Wolverhampton, and the other can be found at Big Sky Soft Play in Peterborough. Only one other Skytrack was ever built, and here's a fun fact. That coaster was one of only two roller coasters in recorded history to ever operate on the Isle of Man. Now that's pretty fascinating. Number 2. Montaña Rusa a la Delta and Mexico's Parque de Divisionales Kikiland This is definitely one of the most head-scratching WTF roller coasters ever built. This now-defunct coaster sat two people in a car that's supposed to resemble a hang glider. The baby blue track is bizarrely profiled, featuring sudden abrupt turns that honestly don't look comfortable at all. 
Considering the wonky build and questionable design choices, it's likely this coaster was made in-house. If that's the case, then while the attempt to build a roller coaster of this scale in-house is commendable, it didn't exactly look like it was worth riding. According to coaster blogger Richard Bannister, this ride would allegedly shut down after its lift hill motor burned out, and even with its off-putting design, there are no recorded accidents that have happened on it. Even today, this coaster still sits on the property, standing but not operating. It's unknown if it will ever open again, but we are still very lucky to have it documented. Number 1. The Cobra 1 model, made by Russian manufacturer PAX. While we already discussed the prototype of this model last year, this variation is vastly different. The ride experience itself is similar to Schwarzkopf's shuttle loop, but instead of a launch powering the train through the loop, a reverse lift builds the necessary momentum. But while the experience isn't anything too unusual, this coaster's weirdness stems from its appearance. Instead of a standard track design, this track more closely resembles that of RMC single rail coasters, but this track is notably different, mainly in its triangular design. Dressed in an eye-poppingly vibrant yellow and pink color scheme, this now-extinct coaster model has become well-known for its bizarre appearance. It even appears as an available coaster type in the game Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, which really goes to show how much research the developers did. This model only operated in two countries, Russia and Kazakhstan. Nevertheless, some hardcore enthusiasts have gotten a chance to check this one out, including the aforementioned Richard Bannister. Bannister said on his website, quote, Climbing backwards up the reverse spike felt genuinely frightening, but after the train dropped, the rest of the ride was enjoyable if not exactly smooth. Unfortunately, this coaster is reportedly no longer in operation, but the fact that it got the most votes from viewers just goes to show its legacy will live on. Before we wrap things up, I want to give a special thanks to Richard Bannister for providing some of the photos for this video. He has an amazing project right now called Retro Games for Mac, which allows Mac and iPhone users to play reimagined versions of classic retro games on their devices. This is an amazing project that's absolutely worth keeping an eye on. So if you want to learn more about this project, I've put a link in the description. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.